Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for May 16th, 2023 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. When I woke up this morning, I checked BirdCast and it said that over 1.2 million birds had migrated through Monroe County, New York last night. So Kim and I met out at the Braddock Bay West Spit before sunrise around 5.30 a.m. The first highlight of the day was seeing a viri, which is a kind of thrush, and is a species that I don't see too often. Here's a beautiful male scarlet tanager perched in a tree. You can see they're completely red or scarlet in color with a black wing. Here's a male rose-breasted grosbeak. You can see that large beak and also that red or rose color on the breast. Along the edge of the water, we spotted this spotted sandpiper. And while we were out there, there was a decent number of warblers moving through the trees and birds flying overhead constantly, a lot of orioles and a lot of birds way up high. They can't really tell what they are. But as we got back towards the entrance, there was one section where we were looking into the brush that there were just a lot of warblers down low, basically at eye level. And here's a photo of that area. And there was at least five Cape May warblers. There were bay-breasted warblers black and white, black-throated blue, magnolia, just tons of different warbler species. So we stood in that one spot for a while with a few other people who had gathered there and were just picking through all these great warblers. So that was really a highlight of the morning and just shows how much migration there was overnight and just a really spectacular thing to witness. And here's one of those Cape May warblers. And remember that yellow rumped warblers aren't the only warblers with yellow rumps. Cape May warblers also have yellow rumps. Over at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch, there was kind of a high, thin layer of clouds, and that really began to thicken throughout the day. The winds for pretty much the whole day were moderate to strong out of the west southwest, so a pretty favorable wind, but they were a bit on the stronger side, and that kept the birds a little bit lower today. And as we got into the afternoon, those clouds thickened more and there was a cold front that was moving in. So we did have a bit of a darker period with some uh, darker gray clouds. Here we have a juvenile broad-winged hawk. And this is a typical example of what we're seeing this time of year with these broad wings. Most of them that we're seeing now are juveniles. We're still seeing some adults, but broad wings are sort of a small, chunky beautio somewhat pointed wingtips because their wingtips are only made up of four feathers, one, two, three, four. And the juveniles have kind of a light brown streaking on the underside that goes all the way up to the upper breast. It's different than the distinct belly band that red tails have. Their tail is pretty plain, but has thin bands on it. And in some lighting conditions, they look like they have a dark trailing edge and others, they look like they don't. But you can see here, it doesn't have much of a dark trailing edge. Here's a juvenile Cooper's hawk that was cruising low to the ground. And here's another look at the same bird. You can see it's pretty ragged looking in the wings. And you can see that vertical brown teardrop streaking, mostly concentrated on the upper breast. You can also see that the outer tail feathers are a bit shorter than the central ones. Here we have two eastern kingbirds that are having a midair squabble. And I like this photo because you can see the red crown on one of them. That's something that all of them show, but it's usually concealed. But sometimes if they get agitated, they'll flare it up. Here's another photo of the same two kingbirds. And one more look at the kingbirds. And remember that kingbirds have a white tail tip, almost like you took it and dipped it in white paint. Here's another juvenile broad-winged hawk showing the same field marks as before. Remember that broad wings don't have dark patagial bars that, like the ones we see on red tails. And again, that streaking starts on the upper breast and goes all the way down compared to red tails that have more of a clean upper breast and a distinct belly band. Here's a barn swallow that was perched on the Hawkwatch platform. Barn swallows are blue on top with a red forehead and red throat, but pale underneath and have a really long forked tail. Here's another juvenile Cooper's hawk. So we see that classic flying cross shape with the big head long tail and long straight wings. We see that typical Cooper's hawk tail where the outer tail feathers are shorter and the central ones are longer, giving it a rounded appearance to the tip. And we know it's a juvenile because it's brownish overall, but especially this brown teardrop streaking that's concentrated mostly on the upper breast. Compare that to this juvenile broad-winged hawk. 
So broadwings are beautio, so they don't have the long tails like we see on Cooper's hawks and sharp shinned hawks. Bit of a short to medium sized tail, somewhat pointed wingtips because again, it's only made up of four feathers. And we see that streaking. This one does appear to have more of that belly band type appearance, but we can see that there is some streaking that does go all the way up onto the upper breast. Here we have a juvenile red-tailed hawk for comparison. And on the red tails, we see those darker patagial bars, although on some birds they're relatively faint like this one. But we see that distinct belly band where it's a very clean white upper breast and then a belly band in the middle. And we see that the tail on these have very thin bands. Here's another juvenile broad-winged hawk. And in this photo, the dark trailing edge to the wing is more obvious. Again, sometimes they show that and sometimes it's not as obvious. But typically for adult beautios, they have the thicker trailing edge. And on juveniles, you wouldn't expect to see much. This one, it's a little exaggerated, I think, because of the direction of the light. Here's another juvenile red tail. Again, notice those dark patagial bars here in the shoulder area, as well as that distinct belly band. Here's another look at a juvenile red tail. Again, dark patagial bars and belly band. And the juveniles do not have a dark trailing edge to the wing and don't have the red tail yet. Here we have a raptor getting chased by some male red-winged blackbirds. So what do we notice on this bird? First of all, it's holding its wings in a bit of a V shape. We see it has an owl-like facial disc, and we see that it's got kind of lanky, almost pointed wings, although the angle makes that difficult to judge, and it looks like it has a somewhat long tail. So this is a northern harrier, and from this angle we get a better sense of the shape of the bird. Again, we see it has a long tail and kind of long, more pointed wings, and we see that it's very plain underneath, almost no streaking at all, and relatively plain in the patagial area as well. So this is a juvenile northern harrier. Here we have an adult broad-winged hawk. So on this one you can really see that bold trailing edge to the wing. You can see the dark tail with a wide white band on it and some dark brown barring on the underside on the uh, breast. And this is a very typical shape for broad-winged hawks in a glide where they have an extremely straight trailing edge to the wing, and their wings look a little bit pointed. Here we have another example of a juvenile broad-winged hawk. This one's in a soar. Still has its wingtips tucked back a little bit, giving it a pointed look. And you can see that it doesn't have the belly band like we see on red tails. It's more streaking that starts on the upper breast. And also the tail bands are a little bit wider than we saw on those juvenile red tails. Here we have an adult red-tailed hawk, kind of in a similar posture. So it's not a direct comparison between the juveniles, but it gives us a sense of a few things. First of all, on the red tail, we see these really dark patagial bars in the shoulder area. And again, that thick, dark belly band with the clean upper breast. Now, since this is an adult, it has the dark trailing edge and the red tail as well. And I'm just going to flip back and forth a few times between this red-tailed hawk and the previous broad-winged hawk. So maybe you can focus on a few things. Let's first look at the patagial bars. See how dark they are on the red tail? We go to the broad wing. It doesn't really have that. It's got a little bit of marking, but it's not the dark patagial bars we see on the red tail. Next, take a look at the belly band. Red tail, very obvious belly band right here in the middle with a clean upper breast. Go back to the broad wing. It's not really much of a belly band. It's some streaking that starts on the upper breast and then continues down into that belly band area, but it's not the clean upper breast with a distinct belly band. Here we have the local Cooper's Hawk acting territorial yet again, chasing off yet another turkey vulture. Here we have a swallow that's overall brown in color, got a kind of a cute face with a really small bill. It looks like it has a white throat and mostly white underneath, except for this one brown breast band. So this is a bank swallow. Here we have another beautio gliding overhead. So which one is this? Is this a red tail or is it a broad wing? Well, we look at it and we see that clean upper breast along with a belly band, and we see that it has markings in the patagial area. So this is a juvenile red-tailed hawk. How about this juvenile beautio? Is it a broad wing or a red tail? We look, we don't really see markings in the patagial area. 
And we don't really see a defined belly band. We just see a lot of streaking that starts on the upper breast. We also see a tail that has kind of a thicker band at the tip. That's another field mark we can use to identify juvenile broad-winged hawks. Here we have kind of a ratty looking immature bald eagle and we had a decent bald eagle flight today. Here's another one. Is this a red tail or a broad wing? We look, we don't see any markings at all in the patagial area and we don't see a belly band. So this is a broad winged hawk. And how about this one? On this one, we do see dark patagial bars and a belly band. And we also see a dark trailing edge to the wing and a red tail. So this is an adult red-tailed hawk. How about this bird? We see a really dark bird overall. Very dark head and underside to the body. We do see some white in this wing pit area and throughout the underwing. So this is a juvenile bald eagle. You can see that large head and beak lets us know it's a bald eagle and the white in the wing pit rolls out golden eagle. And this is actually a very fresh juvenile bald eagle. So one that was born within the past couple months, certainly. And we see a lot of these this time of year. These are southern bald eagles born south of us over the winter and migrating north for the first time. Again, you tell me, broadwing or red tail? We look, we see the dark patagial bars and a belly band that makes this a juvenile red-tailed hawk. How about this one? Again, we see dark patagial bars and a belly band. So this is another red tail. And how about this one? Well, this one has a large red beak and a black cap and really long pointed wings. So this is a Caspian tern. Here we have a bird with a really large head with a large beak. It's dark overall with a lot of splotchy white underneath. So those are all good field marks for immature bald eagles. And here we have another one of those fresh southern juvenile bald eagles with their really dark head and underside of the body. Really fresh plumage, no signs of molt, no signs of feather wear, just extremely fresh. And I'm sure you can get this one. We have a very large looking bird, dark wings and body, white head, white tail. Of course, this is an adult bald eagle. Here's another good comparison. Here we have a juvenile broad-winged hawk. So again, you look in that patagial area, only a little bit of marking. I won't say that they're all completely clean in that area, but you can imagine from a distance you're not seeing those dark patagial bars, just a little bit of streaking there. And you can see there's a teardrop streaking that kind of starts on the upper breast and goes down to that belly band type area, but it's not that clean upper breast with a distinct belly band. And again, some of these juvenile broad wings look like they have a dark trailing edge, but it's not as bold as on the adults. And we see that tail with thin bands. Compare that to this bird. Again, we look at the same field marks, patagio area, a little bit more heavily marked, but sometimes on these juveniles, they're more lightly marked than adults, but more heavily marked than that broad wing we just saw. But here's one big difference. Notice the clean white upper breast on this bird with distinct belly band and again only a faint trailing edge to the wing not that bold trailing edge that we see on the adults and no red tail since it's a juvenile just a sort of banded tail and let's go back and forth a few times again this is the juvenile red tail and here's the broad wing and Keep in mind that this red tail here would be much larger in real life than the broad wing as well. Here's the broad wing again. So look in the difference in the patagial area as I flip back and forth. A little bit fainter on the broad wing, a little bit more heavily marked on the red tail. Now take a look at the belly band on the red tail with the clean white upper breast and compare that to the breast on the broad wing where the streaking goes all the way up. We don't have that clean white breast. One more look at the red tail compared to the broad wing. And the local Cooper's hawk here got tired of chasing vultures and decided to try chasing a red tail. All right, let's take a look at this bird here. We see no dark patagial bars and we see a dark trailing edge to the wing and we see a dark tail with a white band on it some brown barring on the underside. 
The tail looks like a medium length tail, not a super long tail, kind of a straight trailing edge to the wing in this glide posture. This is an adult broad winged hawk. Here we have the top side of a raptor and we can see it's brown overall. It's got somewhat of a owl-like facial disc to it. Maybe the most distinctive thing about it though is this white rump patch. And looking at the underside, we see that it is very plain underneath, maybe just a tiny bit of streaking, but very unmarked in the patagial area. Again, we see those white upper tail coverts or rump area. So those field marks, along with the long tail and kind of long skinny pointed wings, make this a juvenile northern harrier. Taking a look at the eBird checklist from today, at the West Spit, we had 76 species this morning, so just a great morning out there. And at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch today, 54 species. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 161 turkey vultures, 1 osprey, 30 bald eagles, 15 northern harriers, 8 sharp-shinned hawks, 4 cooper's hawks, for Buteos, we had 214 broad-winged hawks and 46 red-tailed hawks and one American kestrel for a total of 480 migrant raptors today. That brings our May total to 9,055 and the season total to 45,880. And I forgot to write it here, but the new species for the season were Veery, Swainson's Thrush, and Black Pole Warbler. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking sunny with a high in the low to mid 50s, winds north-northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour, so that's cold northerly winds following a cold front. It's an unfavorable wind, wouldn't expect there to be much migration at all, and it's going to be pretty cold and chilly, so dress warm if you're out birding. For Thursday, it's looking sunny with a high in the low 60s. Winds starting out south, maybe for the first hour or two, and then shifting to a northeast lake breeze at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So again, we'd only expect light, maybe moderate migration, but that lake breeze will push the raptors away from the lake shore. And for Friday, we're looking at a mix of sun and clouds, then becoming cloudy, high around 78, winds south-southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So these are excellent conditions. Cross your fingers that this forecast holds because this could be the last really big day of the season. And last year on May 20th, now Friday will be the 19th, so right around the same time of year. On May 20th last year, we had similar weather and we had a great day with 1,500 broadwing talks, a record 214 bald eagles, and a Mississippi kite. So Friday is looking like an excellent day. Let's really hope that that weather forecast holds and it should be a great day to be out on the platform for one last big day of hawk watching as we wrap up these final couple weeks of the season. Well, today was a great day of birding with all the warbler excitement in the morning and then a decent hawk flight. And in the video today, I tried to give some more detail about separating juvenile broadwings and juvenile red tails because that's really the main ID challenge for us this time of year, especially at different distances, different angles, birds high overhead. They can really be difficult to tell apart sometimes. So hopefully you picked up some new ID tips in this video and you'll be able to apply them the next time you see them out in the field. Hope to see you soon out at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch platform or out looking for warblers in the morning. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.